Alakazam and Kalamazoo and Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo. <laughs> hey. hey Siri, bite me. What the hell? Hey, aren't you supposed to be working? I'm working. Oh yeah, does you work in? Okay, well obviously I'm not working, but my agent is. You're what? My agent. Meet Bob. Bob. What's up? What do you mean your agent? My agent, my right hand, my, what's the non-binary version of my guy? Uh, hmm. Okay, you know Scarlett Johansson in that movie, Her? Yeah. Bob's my her. You're what? All right, you've probably heard the term AI agent a few hundred times this week alone. But do you know what an AI agent actually is? And I mean that honestly, because I've been asking people and everyone will have maybe a slightly different different definition of what AI agents are at this particular juncture. So I'm saying. Google Maps is an agent of sorts, like a super early agent before, right, uh, the generative web. Um, you gave it two different pieces of context to input, but the agent itself was to get you to that single end location. Okay. So I tried to find an analogy for my clients, and the one I kind of landed on was like, well, if an LLM is a bit like a sat nav, then, you know, AI agents are kind of like a self driving car. Like it can autonomously make decisions and do multi set things to get you to your end destination. Now we're getting somewhere. People are kind of mixing agents, assistant, and kind of calling everything like, but ultimately these assistants typically have like, on the engineering side, multiple agents tied to them, uh, like uh, essentially like leveraging these LLM to, to solve uh, specific problems. What? I see it as a, an extension to an LLM, how it can sort of uh, work with some autonomy. Um, it can have some sort of decision-making qualities about that depending on you know the information that it has sourced to or the tools made available to it um, and you know it obviously has some reasoning capabilities so it can sit there and work through um, you know the goal that's given to it and then uh, you know process that information make multiple calls to tools to the LLMs to do some reasoning for the final output. What? Agentic AI is the combination of these attributes around a large language model that gives it unique capabilities for running uh, actions over longer periods of time with access to external sources and data um, and self-direction uh, in, in pursuit of the user's goal. I know it's a long answer, but I think that's probably the best definition I have today. Honestly, all of those definitions are pretty on the mark. It just, they get a little technical. So here's the super simple definition of what an AI agent is. An AI agent is a large language model powered entity that can complete tasks and make decisions. In other words, what makes an AI agent an agent as opposed to just an AI thing is that it can actually do things, whereas something like a traditional AI chatbot can just return information. Previously, you say, I want to travel from New York to Tokyo. When I get to Tokyo, I want a private car and I want to stay in the Ginza district in Tokyo and I want to stay there for one week. Previously, you might have got back, um, well, here are some ways you could go about doing that. And it was kind of conceptual. I think what we are seeing now in Agentic AI is, is not simply, here's a proposal for how you could achieve it by yourself. It is, these are steps that I can take on your behalf to start to take action on that proposal. And that's a crucial point, the AI agent taking actions on a person's behalf. Because for as much as the AI agent is ultimately doing someone else's bidding, how they do it is kind of up to them. Actually, we should update our definition of an AI agent to reflect that. Autonomy is the ability for it to be able to reason and plan about the series of steps that it will take to accomplish that goal-directed behavior that we talked about before. And so I can have one prompt, it can unpack that and actually spend a, a, a longer period of time working through the implications of how to achieve that goal. And that's where autonomy comes into play as well. Hopefully this is making at least some sense, but I think we can actually do one better when it comes to defining what an AI agent actually is. It's Ratatouille. Or more specifically, it's Linguini, the hapless human that Remy the Rat uses as a kind of 
exoskeleton to cook fancy French food. Remy is the large language model. Linguini is the AI agent, and the pots and pans and produce and proteins are the tools that Remy is able to use via Linguini to fulfill the customer's order, or prompt. And honestly, maybe that's all you need to know about what an AI agent is. It's ratatouille. But maybe you're wondering, how does an AI agent actually work? In the immortal words of John Hammond, I'll show you. So the basic structure of an agentic workflow is prompt, agent, output. The agent part is where all the action is. And the basic structure of the agent part is agent, LLM, tools. You can think of the LLM as the brain, the agent as the body and nervous system, and the tools as, well, tools. Again, Remy, Linguini, pots and pans. How it works is a prompt gets fed into the system and the LLM decides what tasks need completing in order to fulfill the prompt. And it makes those decisions based on the tools made available to it through the agent. Actually, here's an AI agent that I put together using a platform called N8N. Meet Agent WTF, which can identify timely WTF explainer articles from Digiday's archive based on recent Digiday coverage. All I have to do is send a prompt to trigger the agent. The agent will then activate the LLM, which will tell the agent to fetch the latest articles Digiday has published. The agent will do so through a tool that will pull articles from Digiday's RSS feed. The agent will pass those articles to the LLM, which will then tell the agent to use the topic analyzer tool to decide which topics are most common across articles. Then the LLM will tell the agent to use a separate tool to fetch the list of WTF article URLs I've uploaded. The agent will pass that list to the LLM, which will then tell the agent to use the article matcher tool to pick the most relevant WTF article. The LLM will also explain why it decided to pick that specific WTF article. Finally, it will have the agent share all that information back to me, and all in under five minutes. So that's one very niche use case for AI agents, but there are plenty more. We've had the opportunity to put um, AI agents into production for clients of various scales. And I think example use cases of those types of agents include um, you know, agents that are able to analyze over data sets, um, to actively listen for streams of data. For example, you know, hypothetical example, being able to listen for news for a related company or the stock ticker for that company. And every time that name bubbles up, the agent's able to uh, go out, review the contents of that web page, extract the analysis from that page, save it into a database, and then generate insights on that for, a, for onto a web application. But we do a lot of different agentic work across copy creation, editorial, SEO research, social agent listening, um, cultural insights and research, copy validation as part of our work. Um, and then there's a big marketplace of agents in the Pencil Pro <laughs> agent marketplace. Um, I, I would say sort of close to a hundred different agents at least or in the hundreds yep hundreds of agents and here's the thing those agents can consist of sub agents so that agentic workflow from earlier that was a simple version like the baby version the social agents we built for re um uh, there's multiple ages, maybe nine or 10 of them, all doing very specific tasks. One to do image analysis, one to check for content, uh, comment sentiment, one for checking the captions, and another one maybe doing video analysis and pulling, pulling out things like uh, influencer mentions or <laughs> things like that. So very specific. And then bring it all together, we'll have reporting agents. So, uh, and you know, things compiling all the, all the, uh, all the detail. Today we're kind of in that uh, assistance phase. I'd say like we're one of the early adopters, one of the first in market with, you know, uh, integrated solution, uh, completely integrated in the app and, and actually uh, working with our uh, DSP. Um, and, you know, what, what I expect over the next couple of years is that automation uh, initiative to continue and, and to get to a place where most of the most of the workflows can be fully automated. So what we might see in the future, and I think I'm hearing more news about this from Microsoft and Salesforce is they're talking about millions or billions of agents coming out in the future. I think it's indicative of smaller agents with discrete tasks, the very specific tools that are available to them, very specific data uh, that they can de deliver their outcome to a higher degree of quality. 
And then the goal would be that you can begin to connect those agents to each other to accomplish larger tasks. And, and in some ways, that's reflective of the modern day human workforce of different skills coming together to, to achieve the same objective. What does all this mean, though? Like, are we just going to be telling AI agents, book my vacation, respond to my email, make me a sandwich, and the AI agent can just do whatever it wants with that prompt? No, not exactly. Well, yes, probably, but not just yet. Think of it like the crawl, walk, run of letting agents go off leash. You can have AI agents that are deployed that have no real monitoring or observability in real time from a, a human. You can also architect them to actually pause and request feedback uh, from the human in the loop uh, at key points where, and that could be based on kind of a fork in the road of decision A versus decision B. It could be based on a confidence score of the data set it gets back and not being quite confident enough to, make, to take the, the best next action. You're going to engage with the assistant, you're going to get some information, then as a trader, you're going to go and make those changes and so on to your campaigns. Uh, step number two from there is, is same deal, but instead of you going in and making those changes, you, you trust the agent, you press a button, you let the agent go in and make the change. You evolve that to step number three, then like the agent is just doing this proactively and can run as a job and do this every few hours with it, and you can just go and, and get a summary of what was changed. Welcome to the future of work. Welcome.